Toolkit is one of Linux's most unrated powers. It is the Linux security framework, the secret tool that decides who can do what on your system, without giving away full root access every time. If you have been thinking that sudo is the only way to run admin commands, you are about to learn there is a much more fine-tuned way to control privileges. If you are tired of being nagged for a password every time you change your Wi-Fi, mount a USB drive, or tweak network settings, stick around. This video is tested on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but most of it applies to Leap2. Let's get started. What is Poolkit? Poolkit, short for Policy Kit, is an authentication framework. Think of it as a security manager that sits between your apps and root privileges. Traditionally in Linux, root has full power, normal users limited access. With Poolkit, you can grant just the permission needed for just the right time to just the right person. No full root session needed, no constant sudo. How Poolkit works? Poolkit D the background service checking every request authentication agent the little password pop-up you see actions each secured thing you do is an action example rebooting is org.freedesktop.login1.reboot If you are in KDE, GNOME, XFCE, etc., the agent runs automatically. In text mode or SSH, you can use PKTTY agent. Using Poolkit in text mode or via SSH is not easily possible. Therefore, this video focuses on its use in graphical session context. Configuration basics. Poolkit setup has two parts actions.policyfiles in slash usr slash share slash poolkit dash one slash actions. These describe what an action is and its default rules. Do not edit these directly. Authentication rules dot rules files in javascript slash usr slash share slash poolkit dash one slash rules dot d where system package rules live slash etc slash poolkit dash one slash rules dot d where your local custom rules live rules are where you get creative allowing blocking or changing how an action works poolkit utilities you will use PK action lists and describes actions. PK check checks if a process is allowed to do something. PK exec runs a program as another user, like sudo, but pullkit style. PK TTY agent starts a text based password prompt. This agent is used if a desktop environment does not have its own authentication agent. See also their respective man pages for further details. Authorization types. When an app tries to do something privileged, Poolkit can say, yes, no password needed, no, denied, auth underscore self needs your password, auth underscore admin needs roots password, and Underscore keep versions to remember for a while. Implicit authorizations. Actions have three contexts. Allow active, logged in and using the system. Allow inactive, logged in but not active session. Allow any, even remote sessions. Each context can be set to one of the authorization types. SUSE default profiles. OpenSUSE comes with three built-in Poolkit privilege profiles that decide how strict your system is when asking for authentication. Easy, best for single-user desktop systems, fewer password prompts, smoother experience, but lower security. Standard, the balanced middle ground, this is what most users should stick with. Restrictive, maximum security, requires root authentication for many actions, sometimes even disables things for remote logins, best for servers or very security conscious setups. How to switch profiles? All profiles are controlled in the slash etc slash sysconfig slash security file. Open it with your favorite editor. 
slash etc slash config slash security find the line with toolkit underscore default underscore prefs change it to one off easy standard restrictive then apply the changes by running sudo set underscore toolkit underscore default underscore prefs that's it your system will now follow the chosen profile custom rules overrides Sometimes you want your own tweaks, for example, letting yourself manage Wi-Fi without typing the root password every time. On OpenSUSE Lib, custom overrides go into slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs dot local. On OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, overrides go into slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs slash local. Create the slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs directory first if it doesn't exist on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Every time you edit these files, remember to rerun sudo set underscore poolkit underscore default underscore prefs command. Be careful, do not edit the shipped profiles directly on lib slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs dot easy dot standard and dot restrictive on open to the tumbleweed slash usr slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs slash profiles those are system defaults and will be replaced during package updates always use the local file for your overrides this way you can start with SUSE's defaults and then add your personal rules on top keeping your changes safe even after system updates practical home user example here is where the magic happens we will make tumbleweed less annoying while keeping it safe Use Network Manager without root password. On fresh Tumbleweed installs, changing Wi-Fi, adding connections, or editing IP settings may ask for root's password. We can let our regular user do it without being nagged. First, find the action. Run the command pk action and pipe it to grep-i Network Manager. Common ones include org.freedesktop.networkmanager.settings.modify.system and org.freedesktop.networkmanager.network-control. Now create the rule under slash etc slash poolkit dash one slash rules.d and the rules file. The rules file name here I will choose 10 dash networkmanager.rules. Add these rules in the file. Then save and restart network manager running the command sudo system control restart network manager. Now you can manage networks without typing roots password every time. Checking your rules to see what a rule currently requires run the command pk action dash v dash dash action dash id equal org dot free desktop dot network manager dot settings dot modify dot system. Remember, this shows upstream defaults, not SUSE overrides. Restoring defaults. If you break something or want to start fresh, make sure to delete the rules files you created under slash etc slash poolkit dash one slash rules dot d and slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs dot local on lib and slash etc slash poolkit dash default dash prefs slash local on tumbleweed. When you finish deleting the files, remember to run the command set underscore poolkit underscore default underscore prefs. And that's how you take control of poolkit on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. You can cut down on those constant password prompts, keep your system secure, and make your Linux experience smoother, all without touching risky system hacks. Poolkit is one of those things most Linux users never touch. But once you understand it, you can make Linux work exactly how you want, balancing security with convenience. And yes, these rules are written in JavaScript. So if you know JavaScript and want to help OpenSUSE, this is a great area to contribute. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up and check my channel for more Linux content. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.